All right, guys, let's take a look at these uh, the markets here this morning then. So uh, we want to look at previous days market profile levels to find these holes in the market. Um, these are target levels that we'll look for um, in the uh, today's session. But I want to go over this recording specifically uh, for um, our breakout levels and our, um, our scalper that we're releasing. So w we have a scalper that's being released. Uh, let's get it up here. Real quick, I'll show you the setups we've been that's been uh, looking at. News comes out here in about ten minutes, so I want to get over this while we can, and we'll look at some live trades as it runs after news pops out too. Uh, this is a this is a scalper system that can work on any markets around the clock. I made it quite simple uh, for traders. It's long the S and P right now. And you go up to six contracts. We'll get. We'll look into the guts of the of the system here in a second. Uh, it's long. It went long this morning here at uh, what seven o'clock this morning. It's long right now at this level. Uh, so let's go back and look at what it does um, and how we can utilize it as traders in the room. So we, we know we have three. I have three setups in the trading room. We'll go back to midnight. This, I had this thing running on uh, on NASDAQ and the S&P uh, all evening. So let's look at the stops and the targets. So we'll go from midnight on forward, and we'll go over some trades here this morning too. <clears throat> uh, you want to turn it off into news and then turn it like five minutes after news. So we'll, we'll let news come out, and then we'll let it fire back into news and so on. So, but... What, what Scalper, uh, what it tries to do is, is it looks at three different setups. Uh, the first setup it looks at is our zone break. Um, that's where we are. We had some this morning right here. You're breaking, uh, you're, you're breaking into, um, you're breaking into new highs or new lows where the buy stops or the sell stops are getting hit. And then also looks at, uh, look at failure trades where the trend is reversing and it will pick up those trend reversals also so let's take a look at the uh, some setups uh, we've only had one here this morning so far in the S&P long 36 and a half up to 44 uh, we'll go back here a little bit until news comes out so what it tries to do is it tries to find three different setups it finds the zone breakouts we're breaking into these new highs or new lows uh, where um, where only position traders are getting caught in the market and these buy stops and sell stops hit. It looks for my failure trades and it looks for my outer edge trades. So if you look since midnight, it's done very well in the uh, NASDAQ futures. Um, it's the buy setup. It will catch the outer zone trades and then we'll also catch here, we'll just blow this up real quick and I'll look at the, the S&P in a second. So it works around the clock. This is something that you just specifically don't have to turn on um, at a specific time of 9.30 to 10.30 or so on because what it does, it looks for all these setups at the same time. Uh, what's neat about it is is that uh, you can see that uh, even last night um, at the 6 p.m. and so on, um, it's still cranking out trades. So, but let's get into uh, some of the setups and, and what they do and what they're looking for. Um, it will look for the outer edge trades automatically for you. You don't have to specifically put it in to do that. It will look for the zone breaks. Uh, the stop is adjusted. I have it. This is as, as a break even on this. You don't have you don't have to have break even on it if you don't want. But it does have a break even feature, and, and we'll look at some live trades here today after news pops. Um, but you know. You can look at first, it, you can do up to six contracts all the way down to one contract on it. Um, and then uh, it does have a break even feature to it. After you hit your first target, it can break even. Or if you don't want to break even, you have an ATR trail. Uh, these are all break even uh, after the first target. You do have a break even trail. Uh, this is running, like I said, I let it run in the background uh, all last night uh, into, so you can see into um, today's session uh, but you do get um, it will pick up the zone breakdowns it will pick up the uh, the outer edge trade setups 
uh, on these markets. So, you know, it catches pretty much all the swings that we're looking at that we need to look at in these markets. And you can put in what kind of strength you want. So if you want less setups, you can put in a strength that is less. less. If you want more setups, you can put a strength that is more, a meaning you can dictate how many setups that you want to look for like this is this morning's action and we'll look at some trades here today also you can dictate how many uh, setups you want it to fire um, or you can dictate how many setups you don't want to fire so you know like the S&P this morning it's only run a couple trades this morning since midnight right here it's got got long at 36 and a half. I just got long here at 49 and a quarter going into news. But you don't want to run it through news. It's 826. Like you don't want to turn this off. If you're long the market at 49 and a quarter, you know, you'd you want to, you know, it's at 15 and a half right now. You know, I would with like three minutes before news or so on, there's your target that just got hit. Um, I would look at uh, uh, shutting it down until a few minutes after news. Uh, but you can see the targets will hit automatically for you. Um, if what we'll do is we'll look at the background of it a little bit. So the neat thing about it is your strength setting. So your strength setting, the more setups you want, you want a higher strength. 99 is the best strength you can get. You're going to get all these different waves or setups. If you want the lowest strength, it would be zero, meaning you're not looking for a lot of setups and you're not looking for, you're looking for specific uh, highs and lows in the market to be broken and you're not looking for a lot of swings. This is your highest setting, 99 out of 99. Um, here's a different target, targets one through six. I got four on there right now. Um, you guys watched this trade live yesterday, a lot of you members, um, and I showed you the results uh, yesterday of just watching it trade live. Uh, it's very effective on calling these swings. You get a start time and stop, stop time. Uh, your stop ticks, you can put your stop ticks where you want it. Uh, you get a break even plus one. I show you how in the menu what the counter means. Um, here's your here's your stop. Your ATR length is your stop. So your your stop length can be uh, you have an ATR and then you have a trail tick stop. So it's trailing this target right here. So it's long the S&P four contracts at 49 and a quarter. We're seeing at 51 right now going into news and. Um, this will be your ultimate stop. If we close below the stop, you can bring the stop higher if you'd like. You know, you can see on the NASDAQ futures, I like bringing the stop higher. So you can bring the stop higher. So this morning's action, you can see it's stopping out where my with my fourth contract when this ATR is being hit. So you can bring your actually stop inside of a longer Renko bar. You know, you don't want to have uh, really short-term Renkos. And that's another thing. You can use all the Rinkos that you want. Um, it doesn't matter what Rinko size you use. Um, it will still, you can still do one, two, three, four, five, six contracts. But you can adjust the ATR length. And then you can adjust the stop also. So it's totally up to you, you know, how you want to do it as far as that goes um, when you're doing these setups. So... On, as far as the, uh, do we have to specifically set, do we have to specifically set uh, what setups look for? No, all the setups are pre-built inside. So I already set the pre, the setups inside of the, of the, of it already. And so the uh, zone break is already preset. All right, we got the uh, outer edge already preset. And then we got the failure set or set. You can just set the strength of the move. So 1 through 99 will show you the strength of the move. News just came out right here, uh, here in about a minute. You don't want to run through news, and I'll show you why, because it gets a little crazy. Um, I'll just shut it off. It's actually break even plus one on the on the S&P right now because it hit its first two targets. But with news events, you just don't want to let it run through the news event. Uh, only because it could get crazy price action like non-farm payroll or what have you. But, you know, it still, can, it still can run through the news event, you know, if you like. You know, it's just the price is really, really fast. And, uh, you know, I like it to settle down. Uh, but you can see it still does run, you know, through the news. You know, let's get this off here. On the news event, 
um, with the S&P and so on. Um, so what, you know, you can run it through it if you'd like, but it's just really, really a fast market. You can see it's break even plus one um, off that level. It's just a really, really quick, fast market. And I, I like it to settle down. I, I like it to settle down until we get, you know, it's break even plus one. It hits first two targets again. But you see how fast the action is on the price action. Um, it keeps hitting your break even plus one and so on. It's done well this morning. Let me go live action, hit real time. So real time. It's done well. Uh, this is since uh, midnight when I turned it on last night. I'll get you through the trades. These are the trades that was running. So it's done actually quite well uh, since midnight, just turning it on since midnight, letting it run up into the news event. And here's a few trades at the news event. It hasn't run a lot of trades. There's all the trades since midnight. Um, you can see, but it, it's caught a couple outer edge trades. It caught a zone breakout. This is a zone breakout here. Outer edge, outer edge, and outer edge. So it's caught two, three outer edge trades. You see how it caught the swing low, outer edge, outer edge, and then it caught the, um, and now it just caught the, uh, it, it caught the, uh, the zone break. So it will do these automatically for you, like I said, but I don't like running it through news per se. Uh, you can see you can run it through news. News was at 8.30. The S&P isn't as bad. The NASDAQ is crazy volatile through news. Uh, but the, the neat thing about this scalper, that's about, I've been working on this for months on it, is that the unique thing about it is everything's preset. You know, everything's preset uh, with it um, where uh, you can see the difference in, uh, you can adjust a setting. This is our normal setting we have in the room. These are zone breakouts. Well, look at the scalper. Um, it's, it's got filters built into it already. So the filters are built in to look at the higher probability um, zone break here, but then the higher probability outer edge, outer edge, and it caught this big outer edge here also. Now you can have a bigger runner here. I just have it at four. Uh, I got my target here on this uh, S&P, my last one at four ticks at 30 ticks, right? So it hit this 30 tick target here this morning. But if you got a runner, you can run this all the way up if you'd like and catch that whole move up, meaning you can let this ATR trail, this multiplier, all the way up if you'd like. Yeah, that's totally up to you if you want to do that, um, if you'd like to let that run through the, um, you know, get the longer runs in the market in, instead of the smaller runs. So that's, that's something that you can do. Uh, like I said, but the, the unique thing about the scalper system uh, that we have is that uh, everything's preset now. So we don't have to go in here and we don't have to check if we want the, the failure trade. We don't have to check if we want the zone break like right here that's happening right now in the S&P. Um, you know, on specifically on this Renko size, uh, it's going to cherry pick the best zone break here instead of taking all the zone breaks like it does now. Like it'll take all the zone breaks now, but this one, it cherry picked this zone break uh, just after what, eight o'clock here this morning at 49 a quarter and as high as 60, it got as high as 60. So it's gonna cherry pick your trades for you. Uh, it's also gonna get these reversals. Uh, your ATR ticks, I have a 20 uh, trail only because uh, this is a 20 Renko chart, a 120, 20 Renko chart. If you trade off like say the 112 12 Rico chart, I would adjust I would adjust my uh, ATR link trail to 12. Link ATR trail to 12, you don't have to, but what it'll do is it'll keep your your stops tighter along the swing lows because when you what you're going to notice with this scalper is this. When you get a a especially the zone I mean the outer edge trades Outer edge trades, you guys saw a lot of them live yesterday that we did. The outer edge trades, like here on the NASDAQ futures, right? A, a, a um, it just happened here. A, a zone break is very defined. It's breaking out. It's running. You know, th th that's a very defined setup that just came up in, in, the, in the NASDAQ futures. So very defined. 
where if you look at um, it's easy to understand. You're breaking through the swings. This is where the order flow is. It's catching the rolling position traders. The algorithm is programmed to know that if it breaks through this swing, is you're going to catch a lot of buy stops because this is where the order flow is. This is where the sell stops are. This is where the shorts are. So you're going to see this fire when you get through these highs automatically for a zone break. So zone breaks are easy to understand, right? So those are simple to understand. Well, the real nice meat and potatoes trade are the outer edge trades. The outer edge trades are where you get the outer edge trades are where you get these big reversals at these lows, right? So if you look at the S&P, when you get these lows, this is only today's action, like I said. And let me hit real time, real time here. And I'll bring over the results. So this morning, if you look, you know, obviously past results is not indicative of future results this morning. So just make sure we understand that. You know, we've got to put our disclaimer out there. But if you look at the consistency of the setup, um, you're going to find you can go into it and see the consistency of the three setups that work together. They've been working well together this morning on the consistency. Now, you can have this trail still running on the NASDAQ futures also if you'd like. I just have the target out to 30 ticks. But you can come down here and just do one contract also. And you can do micros also. So you can come down to entries per direction, change that to one, and it's only going to look for one contract. So in other words, what you can do, if you wanted to just get this whole meat and potatoes run on this breakout, it will trail this ATR until it's broken. Um, you can do that also. But I just have four contracts. Uh, that's how I showed you guys yesterday um, with these targets. Uh, we got targets, a six first tick target, 10 tick, 20 tick, 30 tick, 40 tick. Um, on the NASDAQ futures, I got the break even off. Um, where the NASDAQ futures, I have the break even on. So we can turn this on also to show you the break even uh, levels. So if I want to come here and turn the break even levels on the NASDAQ futures, break even after six ticks, you turn that on. Um, as far as the, uh, the, NAS, uh, the s and goes, what's been running this morning, I have, get this out of the way. You know, I have the, the full strength on 99.99, that's the highest strength you can go. Hey, Derek, good morning. So it's the highest setting we can go. We're going to try to look for these reversals on the outer edge. It's going to look for zone breaks, and it's going to look for failure trades. So these two are outer edge or failures, and then everything is built into the system. What you want to do is you want to, you'll want to, um, you want to make sure that your ATR length is it is that's your stop right so that's going to be your stop you want to make if you're doing it if you're doing a 20 ATR like we are right here on the 120 20 if you put a 20 trail tick it's going to trail the low of that price bar if you put it inside of the price bar if you put it inside of the price bar like the uh, the Nasdaq futures Right? If we put it inside the price bar of the NASDAQ futures, then it's going to trail the NASDAQ futures, going to trail where you put that trail in. So we have another zone break on the NASDAQ futures here. So it's going to trail inside of that bar. So when we close below that bar on the NASDAQ futures, when we close below it, give this larger then it's going to exit the position. So it's going to continue to try to get my, my third and fourth targets until I close outside that. Now it's got the third target. And then uh, once it closes outside that, um, if you have break even plus one, which I don't know if I have break even plus one on this. I do not. So, I, so if you don't have break even plus one, if break even plus one, it would, it would, it would sell the last contract at 45 if it touches. If not, it's going to wait to a close below this bar which would be down here so you can get larger runners 
right? So if this thing closes down here, it's going to show a red bar, and that's going to fire off um, as far as that goes. If it's if it stays in your bar, it will stay in the trade. If you want a breaking plus one, it would just break even like it did earlier on my other strat where I have it break even plus one. So you can tell the strat what to do, um, whether you want a break even plus one, you don't. Uh, see right there, then it took the other contract out on the runner out. So because it's closing outside of the of the trail. So that's up to you guys how you want to do it, if you want to uh, do that. The, the great thing about this, I think, that is neat is that when you turn this on, you know, you can see how it ran through a news event here this morning. The S&P is not too bad running through the news event on the 120. I would not run this through non-farm payrolls, though, uh, like or the Fed. You know, the rule of thumb is what you're going to find is, and I, I showed traders yesterday, I was showing them the NASDAQ futures uh, yesterday um, for a whole hour on this, and you notice that even in dull times between, I've shown them between 11, 1045 and 1145, it done very, very well. So you don't have to have specific volume hours for this thing to work. In fact, you know, you see a lot of good trades that can fire off, and a lot of the majority of the of, of the of the trades a day that happened that had a real big day on the Nasdaq futures, a lot of the trades happened uh, in the overnight session. You know, so we were cranking trades all the way through in the overnight session because there's not a lot there's volatility, but the Nasdaq slows down, right? So if you look at midnight, it just was on fire, didn't have one losing trade all the way up until after news here this morning. And so it was just, you know, you trade after trade after trade. So, you know, you don't have to specifically say, hey, you know, I want to trade this, uh, I want to trade this specifically at 9.30 or 10.30. You don't have to do that. Um, you know, this thing will run around the clock. You know, on yesterday, you'll get quite a few trades depending on what uh, this is the session yesterday on the S&P. You know, so you can see the uh, S&P session. Um, here's the, I've been running it live on the S&P since midnight. So you can, you can dictate, one, what Rinko size you want and then the strength of it. So the NASDAQ, if you want the strength, you know, if you want the strength, we just saw the runner here on this one, I'm trying to, let me see if I show both markets. They're both trading right there. So the, the NASDAQ the same way here again. So profit one, target two, so there's target four. So if you want, um, if you want this thing to still run, then just, just increase your target, right? Increase your target out. So if you wanted this to still be a runner, then we can increase our target out. Now, if you just want to do one contract and do the same thing, but let's say I want to go out to 1,000 ticks on my fourth runner and still be break even plus one. You know, I could break even plus one that and still be break even plus one. But then it's going to hold until your, your trailing ATR is going to pop out, right? So you can do that also. You can do it where... Um, you can have the thousand tick target out and then the ATR trail will kick it in as far as that goes. You know, but, you know, like I said, on these trade setups, you know, they, they happen around the clock. Um, they happen around the clock, so you don't have to specifically say, I, I need a specific time to do it. So, so the biggest thing for you to to, to do is that when you do this is you want to look at your strength. Do I want a lot of setup? So I have the S&P turned on at the highest level, 99 out of 99. That's telling the strategy to look at all of, that's telling the strategy to look at all of the swings in the outer edge trades, zone breaks, Failure trades or outer edge trades, it's looking at all of them. 
So that's what's done so far. Still trying to find trades right now in the 12020. The 12020, you don't get a, a, a lot of trades. Uh, this weekend, Terrence, uh, Gerald will have it this weekend, and he'll start wrapping it for you. Yeah, and we'll start going over conference calls with everybody. Yep. So when you put this thing on, let's just take a look. Let's still get the simplicity of putting this thing on. We're waiting for a setup on the S&P. And then we'll go into the settings and so on. You don't have to put a trend filter in this also. The trend filter is actually built in. If you want a specific trend filter, you can do it. Everything's built into the strat already. So I kind of made this quite a little easier. And you don't have to let this thing run 23 out of 24 hours a day. Don't let it run through news. I wouldn't. And if you hit your targets for the day and you're happy with your targets on the Arinko size that you guys choose that you want to use, you know, obviously you can manually just turn the strat off. Um, anytime you want to do that. Uh, let me get this up real quick. We're waiting for an S&P trade. And I'll show you how we can break these things down. Uh, one second. So you can change your so when we're going in on the strat, let me put the NASDAQ up. So let's go to the settings real quick while we're waiting for another trade over here. Um, I know I don't want to run this video too long to, to do it because it, we're a little bit slow on the S&P this morning. We had a couple trades after news, one here, one here, this pre-news. But So if you want the highest strength, you want all the zone breaks, all the outer edge trades uh, to fire off, you put 99 out of 99. This you don't have to worry about. If you want to put a specific trend filter in, you can put your specific trend filter in. Like if you want to use an Unirinko bar like we like to use, you can put a 165, 65, uh, 1, 100, 100, whatever you want to do. But you don't have to do that because I have a trend filter built in already to catch all these setups already. If you want a specific trend filter to override it, you can do it. I already have it built in to catch all these trades. So you can just leave that at five minutes. Don't need to change it. Strat's very simple to understand. If I want all this, all the setups to come up, all the swings, you'll put a 99 out of 99. Um, you'll put your time frame. You know, if you want 930, 1600, leave it there. The, the stop, you just want to keep your stop above what Rinko size you're going to use. So if you're using a 40 Rinko size, I would use a 40 stop. Use a 20 Rinko size, I would use a 20 stop. Use a 12 Rinko size, I'd use a 12 stop. And then let your ATR length and trail dictate. If you want a tight trail, if your Rinko size is 20, put 20 down as your trail ticks. If your Rinko size is 12, you can put 12 and it will trail the underlying bar. If your Rinko size is 35, you'll put 35 on your trail ticks. But that is it. I mean, that, that's pretty much it on the strat that you need to do. You want break even plus one, you can put break even plus one if you want that um, after the first target's hit. And then you would just toggle um, you would toggle the uh, strategy on, and then the strategy would fire off and get ready for trades. But that's pretty much the simplicity of the overall strat. You don't need to put in um, a lot of different variables. You know, we don't need all these different variables to be put in to find out when a setup is coming up because this will just put it in for you uh, based upon you putting the strength of the trade into the overall system. So I got 99 out of 99 strength. Now, let's say I, I, I take this off. Now, I'm, I don't want to take this off because I want to run this live all day, um, which is doing. So if you look at the real time, like I said, it's still, that's a result just on these four contracts. Obviously, past results is not indicative future results, but my point is I want to run this live all day. I don't want to turn it off, so I'm going to keep running this live. Um, and I can show you guys at the end of the day uh, the results on this, and I'll send the charts out. Uh, but you, um, if you wanted less trades, like I said, then 
if, he, if this is if this trading is too much for you like yesterday this is way too much you're trying to get all these swings if that's too much then what you can do is just lower your strength lower your strength from to 99 go all the way goes as low as zero so when you lower your strength it's going to cherry pick those setups for you um, it's going to cherry pick all those setups for you uh, according to the strength that you put in under ATR tick. So the, like I said, this strat's a little bit more simplistic because what it's doing is trying to get these outer edge trades. That's an outer edge. That's a zone break. Outer edge, outer edge. Um, and then you can adjust your ATR length also as long as you want it. Totally up to you. Uh, when you do this, like I said, on your ATR length, you can adjust it how you want to adjust it based upon what kind of trail do you want. So if I get out, like the NASDAQ futures, you get some nice brisk moves on this thing. So on the NASDAQ futures, if you noticed, we get these hard up moves and hard down moves. So this is a, uh, it had back-to-back -back trades. This is a outer zone going right into a zone break, zone break, zone break, outer zone. So when you see this occur on trades like this, you can keep this runner running based upon, now I have break even plus one all these, right? Break even plus one, break even plus one, but you don't have to do that. You can take the break even plus one off and just go by your trail if you'd like. My point is, is if you notice when this thing gets into these, outer edge setups or these zone break setups you know when you turn on the highest settings it's going to try to find the break in the market it's also going to have your stop just outside of the zone break you know so when we do these setups like that you have a predefined stop going into the trade because we're looking for specifically we are looking for a zone break, outer edge, and then we are looking for a um, a failure trade. And like I said, if you didn't want like this morning, if you just want to take, if you don't, if you want to dial this down, you can dial it down. Like on the Nasdaq futures, you can dial it down as much as you want. All right, dial it down or speed it up as much as you want. You know, this I like the 99 setting on the Nasdaq futures and the and the S and P to show all the setups. So, but you can change that for the speed of the market. So this is what we're dealing with today on the S and P.